going to show you how to create this versatile watercolor effect in Photoshop. This would be right at home on a holiday card, an ornament, or pretty much whatever your heart desires. So let's get at it. I'm Kara Plitinich and I help creatives up their game with inspiration and know-how. Here you'll find beginner-friendly projects and tutorials for Photoshop, photography, design, and more. Be sure to check the description below for any links or free downloads mentioned in this video and hit me up at karaplichinich.com to check out my full library of in-depth courses. First thing we need to do is create our document. So we're going to come up to File, New, and you can create whatever size document you want here. I'm going to select inches and set a width of five and a height of five and a resolution of 300. Down here for background contents, I'm going to choose white and we'll just go ahead and click create. So now that we have our document, the first thing we want to do is create the shape that we're going to be adding the watercolor to. So we're going to press U on your keyboard to grab your shape tool family. You can see over here, this is the U family. And the family member that we want in this instance is the custom shape tool. So once you select that, if you come up and look in your control panel, there's a drop down here and there's all kinds of different shapes. Yours might be displaying differently than mine. It kind of depends on your version of Photoshop and what your settings might be, but you can always come over here to the cog wheel and change what you're viewing. So for example, I could change this to large thumbnail and if you're in earlier versions of Photoshop, you can make sure that you click see all shapes or include all shapes to be able to see everything. Otherwise, it defaults to a smaller grouping. So once you get your shapes displayed here, if we scroll down, 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 there is a wild animals folder in this version of Photoshop that includes all these fun shapes here, including this reindeer. So I'm going to double click to select it and close the panel. And next, we're going to come over in the control panel and we're going to choose shape from this drop down. And we're going to set the fill to white and we'll leave the stroke set to none. So for the stroke, you want to make sure it's the white box with the red line through it. So you have to click on both the fill, select it, and then click on the stroke and select the stroke. Then we're ready to draw it out. So I'm just gonna click and drag while holding shift. If you don't hold shift, you might get a squished shape. So I'm holding shift. Um, depending on your preferences, maybe you don't need to. It just depends. So experiment. If it's getting squishy, press shift or let go of shift. When you're happy with the size, go ahead and let go. Now we filled our shape with white so that it doesn't interfere with our painting, which you'll see in a minute, but it does make it hard to see what we're doing because our background is also white. So if we need to temporarily hide our background, we can come over to our layers panel, which you can find by choosing window layers and clicking off this little eyeball here next to the background layer. So if we click, that will hide the background, and now we're just looking at the deer layer. If you want to move your deer, you can click on your move tool or press V for move, v -v -v, and then position it where you want to have it. I'm going to put mine in the center, but a little bit higher because I want room down here for text. And if you want to scale your deer, maybe you decide it's too big or too small, you can press Command or Control T at any time. And then depending on your preferences, shift or don't hold shift to proportionally scale the deer. When you're happy with everything, you can click this check mark in the control panel to confirm it. Now we are ready to paint. So we're going to make another new layer because in Photoshop, we always want to be painting on a separate layer. And we're going to go get our brush tool. So you can press B on your keyboard for brush, or you can come over to your toolbar and click right here. In the control panel, we can select the brush we want to use. So up here, you should see a preview of whatever your current brush is. You'll see the brush tip and the size measured in pixels here. And if you click on that, 
it will open up your brush panel and your brushes probably look quite different than mine. That's all right. You can change the way this looks by coming over to the cogwheel again. And I am currently viewing with the brush name. I'm also seeing the brush stroke and the brush tip. So that's why my setup here looks like that. So you can change those things if you want to. And if you haven't already done so and you are a Creative Cloud subscriber, you're gonna wanna come down here and click Import Brushes. And I have another video that I've made that I'll link to below about exactly how to do this and, and what that means. But basically, this is gonna take you to Adobe's website where you can download an incredible treasure trove of free brushes, again, for Creative Cloud subscribers. And um, they're pretty amazing. They're made by Kyle Webster and they're incredible. So that's what I have here. That's what all these folders or most of these folders are, including what we're gonna be using in this video, which is his watercolor collection. So once you've got Kyle's brushes loaded here, go to his watercolor collection and choose a watercolor brush. I'm gonna be using the Big Rough Wash Small Grain. So I'll double click to select it and close the panel. Then we need to choose our color. So if you don't have your swatches panel open, you can find it by going to Window, Swatches, and then clicking to select a color. And I'm gonna go with this autumn red down here that I happen to have. You can choose anything that you want and then close the panel get it out of your way. And we're almost ready to paint. This is what it looks like if we just start painting we get this wonderful muddled um, watercolor effect. And just to make it look a little more interesting and um, add some depth to it, I'm also gonna turn on some cool brush settings. So to do that, we're gonna come back to our control panel and click this icon here that has the brush on it. And this brings up our brush settings. And the only thing we're gonna mess with here is color dynamics, which is not currently enabled for this brush. So I'm gonna click color dynamics to enable it. And then I'm gonna come down here to hue jitter and I'm gonna drag this to 10%. So what that means is that Photoshop is going to autom automatically jitter or sort of randomize the color of our brush uh, based on our current color. It's going to go 10% in either direction on the color wheel. So it creates a cool effect. As you can see here, if I keep painting, I'm still in the reds, but I'm getting a little bit of orangey, a little bit of darker reds. So it's just creating a, a cool look. You can bump this higher if you want to. Um, maybe I'll just try 13. You can also play with the saturation jitter and the brightness jitter. For this, I'm gonna keep it um, pretty low because I don't want it to get too crazy, but you can experiment and do whatever you want. When you're happy with your settings, go ahead and close that panel. And now we're ready to paint. And it doesn't matter if we're painting out of the lines because I'm gonna show you in a minute how we're gonna clean this up. So next, I'm just going to click and paint over my deer. And you can do it in one long stroke if you want, or you can kind of stamp it. The, the only real important thing is to cover the deer because once we turn that white background on, we won't see the deer anymore. So we wanna make sure that it's covered in our paint. And if you want to play around with the other brushes that Kyle has, you can you know, certainly go back and grab a different brush. Another one that I use a lot is this massive random brush. So if I double click to select that, I'm gonna go back to the settings and make sure I turn on those color dynamics again. And then I can use that brush and that creates a different look, a different effect. So now we have this mess all over our workspace, our document, and that's just fine. I'm gonna show you how we can make it fit all in the lines just perfectly in a snap. So in the layers panel, if we don't already have this open, again, that's lay window layers. And what we're gonna do is take this paint layer, layer one, can double click to rename it paint and press enter. 
and we're going to clip it to the dear one layer. So that just means that the dear one layer becomes like a stencil and it means that this layer will only appear wherever it overlaps the deer. So to do that, we're gonna hold down the Alt or Option key and hover your cursor in the space here between the two layers that we wanna to clip together. And you'll see this square with a little arrow. And when you see that, you're no, you know you're in the right spot. So go ahead and then click and you'll see that that layer just clips right to the deer. And I think it looks pretty good. You could continue painting if you wanted to change some things up. Another thing that I like to do is add a bit of alcohol uh, splatter to this. So Kyle has a brush for that too. So if we come back to the control panel and click once again on the little brush, uh, brush tip preview up here, and we scroll through, you'll see that Kyle has an alcohol brush and it's already set to white. So I'm going to double click that and you can see it's this spatter here. We can change the size of our brushes by pressing the left or the right bracket key. So that's the left bracket key makes it smaller. It's next to the letter P on your keyboard. The right bracket key makes it bigger. So now with this selected, we can go ahead and just kind of spatter the deer a little bit with the alcohol. If we want to kind of rough it up a smidge, you can decide if you want that brush to be big or small. Just depends on the effect that you are going for. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna add a little more texture to this by creating another layer. So I'll click to add another new layer from the bottom of the layers panel. And this one I'm gonna call spatter. So we'll double click and rename spatter. So this, this time we want the paint to go outside the outlines of the deer. So we're not going to clip it like we did here. I'm also gonna turn the background layer on again so we can just see a little bit more what we're doing. So now in the background down here, I'm gonna click the eyeball to the left of the background thumbnail. But you wanna make sure that the spatter layer is the one that is still selected because that's where we want the paint to go, not on the background spatter layer. Okay, so let's go back to that brush tip preview. And of course, of course, Kyle has a spatter collection of all kinds of different spatter brushes. So um, I'm gonna go maybe with just the first spatter. So I'll double click to select that. And um, I'm gonna go back and choose another red color, maybe the same as I did before. And also come back to the settings and go back to color dynamics to turn those on. And now I'm gonna spatter around the deer a little bit. And you can use this brush like a stamp where you just click with it, or you can click and drag. And I'm just kind of throwing some spatter around so this doesn't look so clean and perfect. I wanna mess it up a little bit. And this brush you'll notice is randomized. So as you're painting with it, it's changing sizes and it's kind of doing its own thing to help you create the sort of messy looking piece. Okay, that looks pretty good. We're gonna keep the spatter brush. We're gonna add one more layer. So at the bottom of the layers panel, again, click, and we'll, we'll call this uh, gold splatter. And this is obviously totally optional, but what we're gonna do here is I have a free gold glitter um, action and style collection that I'm gonna use here. So if you want to use this, you can also download this. The link is in the description below this video. So this is free and to employ it, all you do once you get it loaded in here and instructions are included, once you get it loaded, you just double or single click, excuse me, to apply this from your styles panel. So you would go to window styles and once you get it loaded, you would find it here and then I'm just gonna click, it comes in a high res and a low res version. I'm gonna click the low res version and it will apply 
a gold glitter effect, which we don't see yet because we haven't painted anything. So that effect is now applied to the gold splatter layer, which currently is empty. But maybe if we come over here and I just click and paint now, maybe you can see that it is in fact golden now. And to really make it visible, I'm going to use one of the glitter brushes that comes with that free download uh, called Glitter Outline Low Res. And if I double click that and using this brush, I'm going to just set the size and paint a little glittery sparkle nose on Rudolph. We can make that as big or as little as we want to. This brush um, it paints like scattered blobs of glitter. So it's not going to paint a perfect circle. You could also sprinkle some glitter on the antlers if you wanted. That's kind of fun. Oh, I like that. So wherever you want some glitter, you can use this brush and you can see here that it just kind of paints a little glittery mess. Um, maybe hooves could have glitter. This is a fancy reindeer. Um, so there you go. And uh, for the couple of final touches here, I'm gonna go to my libraries panel where I've already prepared some text to bring in. But um, you could just you know, use, use the type tool and whatever uh, scripty kind of handwritten font you think fits well. I like the look of this with our deer. So the last finishing touch that I'm going to apply here is a watercolor texture paper. This is a whole set of watercolor textures, if you can believe it. This is from Design Cut, and I'm going to just pick one here. And if we zoom in, you can see it's, it's a very nice texture paper. And I'm just going to select it all by pressing Command or Control A, Command or Control C to copy it. And then I'll switch back to this image and press Command or Control V. And it's rather large. So depending how big you want that texture to appear in your piece, you may need to scale it down by pressing Command or Control T, just like we did with the deer, and then dragging in from a corner. And I'll press Enter to set it. Now, obviously, it is covering up our design. So we're going to change that in the layers panel by changing the blend mode from normal to multiply. And if you want to dial down the texture a little bit, you can come over to the opacity and just, you know, soften it a little if, if it's too much, but I kind of like it being, being high like that. So you can see if I zoom in, that it really does make this great watercolor texture. And there you go. Your deer is ready to take to the sky.